Budget focused gamers, the next generation of graphics cards from Nvidia, Intel and AMD genuinely will be very exciting indeed. An RDNA 4 in particular is shaping up to be extremely interesting for several reasons. The architecture is going to be drastically different in many ways to what we have with RDNA 3 and ray tracing in particular will see noticeable upticks in performance. But what if you want more performance? Sure. I do grant you that a lot of folks aren't willing to spend 1,000, 1,500 or 2,000 US dollars on a graphics card, but there are also a significant number of people who do want that level of performance. Well, your choices, of course, for the next generation does seem to be limited to NVIDIA's RTX 50 series, but there is also RDNA 5, which will be waiting in the wings. In this video, I want to talk to you guys about some of the rumors that I've been hearing for RDNA 5, because basically, yes, it will be a chiplet based design but AMD's approach for RDNA 5 will be very different from what we see with RDNA 4. It will incorporate a number of additional features on the GPU and in many ways will actually take a more NVIDIA like approach. So let's just get right into it shall we. So first up the release date. It seems that RDNA 5 is scheduled to launch after Blackwell but before RTX 60, also known as Rubin. I'm hearing a tentative release date of 2026 from a few people. This would make sense given the rumors that RTX 50 shall launch in late 2024, or more likely, at least of the according to the latest scuttlebutt anyway, a Q1 2025 announcement for Blackwell, and RDNA 4 is looking to follow roughly the same type of time frame. Now, if you've been following PC gaming news in the rumor mill, you're probably aware that the initial reports for RDNA 4 pointed to AMD planning it to be some type of MCM beast. And there were even patents from the company that indeed we would see multiple compute chiplets. This was something that I was reporting in terms of rumors and others were saying much the same, but it seems that the MCM variants were canned. In fact, I think I was one of the first, perhaps the first to report on the cancellation, as well as the new plans and directions for the company. So again, we're left with N48 and 44. I won't verbally go over the specifications again in detail because we've gone over them several times on the channel before and really there's not been much change. But in essence, the raster performance of the products is going to be roughly on par with the high-end N31 products, such as the RX 7900 XTX. Now, I want to stress that this is a ballpark performance figure. The final performance isn't in yet because obviously there can be changes in terms of clock frequencies, software, and so on. It seems that... Um, the N48 parts are probably going to be decently north of 3 gigahertz, but we'll see about that. But either way, they are going to be monolithic and the dies themselves pretty small. In some ways, AMD's strategy with RDNA 4 seems to be somewhat reminiscent actually of Polaris and cards like the RX 480. This was close in performance to previous generation parts like the R9 390, for example, but was priced very cheaply and also competed favorably with products like the GTX 980 from NVIDIA. Although it's worth noting, of course, that much like we're going to see with Blackwell, NVIDIA back then launched the GTX 10 series with Pascal's flagships, such as the GTX 1080, handily spanking Polaris, but it should do. It was at a much higher price. Speaking to some sources, there are, well, let's just say several reasons for the cancellation of the high-end parts for RDNA 4, but ultimately it was kind of like a series of events. You can think of it really that AMD wanted to shift as many resources as it could for RDNA 5 to make sure that it was on time and met market as well as internal expectations. But in turn, why is RDNA 5 so important? Well, for one, AMD truly does believe, at least what I'm hearing, that it has a shot at being very competitive to NVIDIA. But it's not just in terms of, let's say, in terms of the number of frames per second in games. It's because of the market as a whole, particularly plans for HPC and data center. And this comes to new features that it's going to be bringing into the fray. So what are those new features? Well, let's ignore the obvious ones like the chiplet stuff and GDDR7. Um, 
There's probably a number I have not heard about, but a few of the big ones I have are register renaming. Although one person told me this is not part of RDNA 5, two sources have told me it is, so for now I'm leaning towards it being true. But arguably the biggest change is hardware matrix accelerators. Now, to be fair, AMD has kind of done this with their MI series of cards, which leverage cDNA, but it hasn't been present in their gaming-focused cards. Now, I do imagine that the accelerators found in RDNA are going to be a little different in terms of their abilities from cDNA. However, broadly speaking, AMD will be taking this concept, tweaking it, and incorporating it into RDNA 5. Now, the actual technical implementation, which you can see in the cDNA diagram, seems very similar to what AMD are doing with RDNA 5, at least according to what I'm hearing. But there will be a number of reasons that this is important, not just for gaming, but for HPC as well. Now, if you're into gaming, graphics, AI, that type of thing, you're probably very much aware that GeForce products, such as, let's say, the GTX 490, use various dyes, for example, AD102. But this same dye can be found in multiple different products and not just GeForce gaming cards. For example, the AD102 can be found in various L40 products, and these are for professional use. These cards have some differences, for example, extra RAM for professional usage, changes in other specifications, but NVIDIA can just charge a lot of cash for them. Now, in many ways, it's kind of funny because AMD are somewhat taking steps towards this principle and not just in terms of the market segmentation. Now, remember, there have been pro cards in the Radeon lineup as well. But because of the changes that AMD are making in terms of architecture, they're going to be so much more capable. Let's take RDNA 3 and particularly RDNA 2 for a moment. Many of the functions in the GPUs were largely reused to do multiple tasks. I'm simplifying this a lot, but let's take ray tracing as one example. With TMUs, they of course do, well, texture mapping unit stuff but they can also double up to perform some RT tasks. The intersection testing for RDNA 2 is done on the TMUs. In simple terms, this is basically figuring out if something in the scene intersects with rays when you're, well, again, performing ray tracing. But this all then leads to you needing to actually run BVH, and this is run on a shader, but it's essentially done in software. NVIDIA, meanwhile, since Turing, also known as RTX 20, have had that hardware accelerated. And from what I'm hearing, RDNA 4 actually does have dedicated BVH acceleration. Now, this is probably explaining some of the big bump in performance we've heard relative to RDNA 3, and a big reason, of course, Sony are incorporating RDNA 4 RT technology in the PS5 Pro, at least according to the rumors. RDNA 5, however, takes this concept a step further again, and not only does it have the registry naming that I mentioned a moment ago, it also incorporates matrix acceleration into the hardware. Arguably, this makes a lot of sense for AMD. Remember, they can create chiplet designs which are heavily scalable and performant, and because tensor cores and all this fancy RT stuff in NVIDIA GPUs eat up a significant portion of the monolithic dies in, let's say, the RTX 40 GPUs, it's not been exactly conservative in terms of space. But now with this chiplet approach, AMD are just a lot more free to be able to go balls to the wall. What about specifications? Well, unfortunately, of course, we are dealing with products which are not exactly at the market at this point, so definitely specifications can change. And this gets particularly dicey because I've also heard two figures both 380 and 360 compute units for the Halo design. More sources are leaning on uh, 380, but this could A, be incorrect, and B, this figure could certainly change before the product hits the shelves. Now, also remember that this is the top-of-the-line design, the design which would be the highest configuration possible with all of the chiplets and all that stuff enabled. So it certainly isn't outside the realms of possibility that the Halo products could be reserved for non-gaming purposes. Think data center and professional uses. 
Now, some people are telling me that this is not the uh, current goal of AMD. They want those products to also be at the hands of gamers. But whether that's going to be financially viable or not, or whether plans can change, I suspect some of this is also going to, well, just be pretty much down to competition from NVIDIA. Now, I have heard some things regarding the architecture as a whole, but for now, I want to keep that quiet because I'm not certain about several elements, so I think it's better just to not say anything. I will, however, say, like a moment ago, that we are going to be seeing new memory technologies like GDDR7 supported. Now, it goes without saying that, in theory anyway, this should outperform GB202 based Blackwell products quite handily. And quite frankly, it should because these products will launch after RTX 50. So basically RTX 50, to what I'm hearing anyway, and there is of course always a bit of confusion with the stuff, RTX 50 was originally designed to essentially outperform RDNA 4's Halo SKUs. Again, the ones that AMD canned. So Rubin, meanwhile, is basically to take on RDNA 5. Now, in regards to the RDNA 5 architecture, at this point, I have been hearing several things, but quite frankly, I want to keep quiet on them for now because there are some elements of the design that, quite frankly, well, different sources are contradicting each other, and I think at this point, it's a little early to start talking about this. So I'll do a little bit more digging, but from what I do understand, at the very least, the highest performance tiers will indeed be utilizing GDDR7. And it's going to be a very interesting uh, series of cards, I suspect. Now, in regards to performance, I think it goes without saying that most likely um, NVIDIA are going to get kicked in the balls by RDNA 5 when it comes to facing off against Blackwell. But... Of course, they probably should. Again, RDNA 5 is going to launch after Blackwell, at least according to all of the things that I've been hearing anyway. And so you would, well, just naturally assume that RDNA 5 is going to outperform it because typically speaking, the later architecture, if you're talking about flagship versus flagship anyway, is just simply going to win. Instead, it's going to be a much more interesting discussion regarding uh, RDNA 5 versus NVIDIA's RTX 60 GPUs, which it seems like that is going to be Rubin. And we'll talk more about that, as in Rubin, in a future video. But I think that's just about it for this particular video. What I will also add is I have also launched a new YouTube channel. The first video is officially live. And what is this channel, I hear you ask? Well, it's actually about fitness. A number of people have been asking me on Twitter and also just friends and so on to talk about how to get into fitness and health. So this first video is going to be going over the very, very, very basics. So the first video is going to be going over the very, very basics. It's not going to be for those who are already very familiar with the gym. In other words, they've kind of got their routine already worked out. But if you're someone who's been considering working out, maybe you just want to know the basics to kind of start getting some hints and tips, then that video is going to be for you. In the future, though, I will also be putting out more complicated videos, topics on diet, workout routines, form... And also, I have a couple of friends who are personal trainers, so they're going to be collaborating with me. It's certainly not going to be a replacement for RGT. It's going to be something I do alongside it because it's just fun. But um, yeah, I don't know how many videos at this point I'm going to be doing per you know week or whatever. I'm aiming probably for like one. But it's going to be a very kind of chilled out, fun format. So you can check that out if you so desire. Um, you can find a link to it in the video description. There is also a website. Um, the bigger videos, you know, the kind of guides, if you will, will also be available on the website in most cases. At least that's the current plan. There is not going to be any sign up, at least, you know, that I can envisage on the website. You know, I'm not going to be asking you for like mailing list stuff. You could basically just go there, check it out, and it's just going to be the written form of the article. Uh, sorry, written form of the video. That made sense, right? I don't know. My brain is tired. It's been a long day. You can probably tell. With that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.